I've always loved stories about performing artists, uh, especially, you know, musicians and dancers. I've always loved stories about the making of art and the development of artists. And I think that stems in large part from my own background as a figure skater, which, you know, is a performing art at its heart, I think. Um, and I, I'm also quite an opera buff, as some of you may know, but anyone who is new, I am a big fan of opera. Um, and I am also uh, a big lover of the American West, of the landscape and uh, some of the people. Um, and in fact, I am wearing a Wyoming sweatshirt that I own. Um, and so, Willa Cather's 1915 novel, The Song of the Lark, which is about the journey of Thea Kronborg from her childhood in a nowhere town in Colorado to becoming a superb Wagnerian soprano performing at the Metropolitan Opera was basically guaranteed to be a home run for me. And I will not keep you in suspense, it was. I uh, really, really liked this novel. The story is incredibly simple. This is not a plot-driven work. There are no major twists and turns to the story, and in fact, Thea never really even faces any major setbacks in her progression towards becoming uh, this great singer uh, that aren't internal to her, that aren't sort of her own struggle with herself and with her art um, and her sort of, she does struggle at certain points to find inspiration and to find the right teacher. Um, but aside from that, there are no major hurdles for her to get over in terms of her singing or her performance. Um, and the themes of the novel are, are really simple to my mind as well, and just based on what I've told you about the plot, you can probably sort of see them coming. I mean, it is about the American dream, certainly, um, although it has darker undertones to this story of success than I think most uh, stories like this do, because, you know, it, it's made very clear that Thea's story is exceptional, that um, getting where she gets is was not the norm, has not really ever been the norm. Um, you know, a lot of people who moved out west lived very grim lives and, you know, worked as miners or as, you know, train engineers for their entire lives. And there's nothing wrong with that. But um, <clears throat> this idea of the American dream and attaining this huge success um, is inspirational, but it's just not the norm. And that's made very clear throughout this novel when we see many other people, um, you know, either not really get very far in life or not, or, or just screw up, basically. Um, and so there is that darker undertone, and I don't mean to say that, you know, in order to live a fulfilled human life, you need to be a, uh, you know, an opera singer at the Metropolitan Opera, or a millionaire or something, I'm just saying that this novel does have a bit more, a bit more of a darker undertone to this success story than I think most of, most of them do. Um, you know, this novel is also about the landscape of the American West, there's a particularly beautiful passage about, um, these Anasazi ruins at the bottom of a canyon in Arizona, which Thea visits. Um, <clears throat> this novel is about familial relationships, uh, especially between Thea and her mother. Um, it's about, you know, mentor-student relationships. She has a, a string of teachers whom she has very different relationships with. Um, it's about romantic relationships to a smaller degree. Um, and of course, it's a coming-of-age story. We start with Thea as like a nine or ten-year-old, and we end with her in her 30s, uh, and of course it's the story of the making of an artist and her development as an artist. And that that development as an artist and her development as a as a young woman are very much paralleled in this. Um, you know, at the end of the novel we have her uh, singing these incredible, intense, uh, complex Wagnerian heroines like, like Venus and Elizabeth and Sieglinde and Fricka. Um, and she's owning the roles. She's not just performing them. She is creating them anew, as the best opera singers do. And at the same time, she we see her so to also take control of her own life. There is one decision in particular that she makes at the end of the novel that shows her sort of declaration of independence as an adult. And that's kind of why I think that um, stories of of the development of artists can be so compelling even to people who aren't necessarily artists themselves, um, because I think 
becoming an artist is in a way a sort of romanticized um, version of just what it is to become a you know a fully fleshed human being in a certain sense. So I definitely feel like I can recommend this novel. I was not expecting it to be as easy to read as it is. I don't know where I got this idea from that Willa Cather is this very sort of flowery, poetic writer, and I, I went into this novel thinking it would go very slowly and thinking that um, it might be difficult, not necessarily dense, but um, certainly slow going as like very poetic novels can be sometimes. Um, but it's not, it's not. It's written, Willa Cather's prose style is very plain and clear and simple, and that can come off sometimes, I think, as a bit pedestrian and even sometimes a little clunky. Um, I don't think Willa Cather is the best author of dialogue. Um, however, that is a small reservation. That is not the case on any every page by any stretch of the imagination. And there are moments of rhetorical brilliance as well. So, um, anyway, I really like this novel. Um, it is not the Willa Cather novel that I hear everyone talking about all the time by any means. Uh, so if there's anyone out there who who's read it, then I would love to hear from you. Um, if there's anyone out there, I'm sh I, I mean, I know that there are those of you out there who've read a lot of other Willa Cather novels and probably this one as well. Um, and I would love to hear from all of you with your thoughts on this novel or on Willa Cather in general. Um, but anyway, that's basically my thoughts on this book. I really enjoyed it. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you later.